what it is everybody we back with another reaction video and we'll be reacting to nightwing versus daredevil death battle dc versus marvel the tale is old as time this is death battle's first live action death battle kind of like um i don't know if anybody's a fan of bat in the sun on youtube their youtube channel that does battles they always live action if i remember correctly all live action where they had like well it was based on fan votes so i remember it's been a while it's been a year since they've done anything i know they had a flash versus quicksilver and one of the older ones was like superman versus thor and they had really cool wolverine versus uh the predator they had wonder woman versus the predator the chick that they have playing one, oh my god, she is fine as fuck. I think she's like, uh, I want to say Italian or Greek or something. But, um, but they do live action, you know, of course. Death Battle does animated uh, fights. But this is their first live action. Now, I don't know who they're going to have win this because, like, Death Battle tries to do you know analysis and see who the best case and who comes out on top more often so there it is like, well this person comes out on top six times out of four what six times out of, four, six times out of ten so the, the whoever gets the six is they, they said they're declared the winner of this fight um, i don't think don't think they ever had a stalemate because no one likes a draw everyone hates a draw or like a no contest like in boxing or something like that. Everybody hates draws. So somebody they want to see somebody get knocked the fuck out. And uh so they never have like I don't think they ever had a draw. Well I think the closest thing they had was a draw was um it was like Deadpool versus one of those those horses. Um some like children's cartoon. It came way after, you know, my time as a child so I didn't watch it. Plus, it seemed to be more targeted towards young girls. I heard boys watch it too when I watched that. I heard boys watch it as well, but uh, I can't remember the name. It's like, it's not, is it My Little Pony? I don't remember. But I remember that was pretty much like really the only one that was kind of like a stalemate. It, it ended really funny and. I guess they neither one could really get the best of the other, and then they kind of just combined forces and like went into the real world, I think, and attacked the artist, if I remember that correctly. But uh, anybody who hasn't seen Scrooge, they have Batman versus uh, Captain America, Batman versus Spider Man. Uh, they had the really famous ones that, had, that a lot of people were up in arms about it was the Superman versus Goku. They did that one twice. Because people are like, well, Superman is, is, a, is a Super Saiyan God now. So what about, you know, Super Saiyan Blue and all that stuff? Then they did it again and had Superman win even more definitively than he did the first one. And that pissed a lot of people off. Because anyone knows that that debate has been on the internet. I think, I remember when I was like 15, I remember searching like, you know, Dragon Ball Z websites and finding that damn shit. People was on that argument on different forums and shit. When they just arguing with each other and calling each other all kinds of names. That was my first really introduction to, I guess you could say, a comment section on different websites of people debating on a Dragon Ball Z website, mind you. So you know everyone was one sided and, and anybody came in there saying, oh, I think Superman will win immediately attack I don't know who won that fight I would say I would assume Superman would win that I like both characters you know I'm not one of these people who I wish Superman didn't exist like I'm not I'm not a fan of Captain America but I don't wish he didn't exist because people there are people who like Captain America me I've never been a fan of his you know him um I'm a fan of his in some things. I shouldn't say I'm never a fan of his. Some things I like him in. Most things I don't. But I don't think he shouldn't exist. Yeah. 
But anyway, let's just get into this death battle. It's time for the battle. Here we go. I'm curious who they gonna have do the um play the characters. Oh yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like both these characters, but I think I'm gonna go with Daredevil. I think I'm gonna go with Daredevil. I wonder if the same dude who played Quicksilver on Bad in the Sun, who's playing Nightwing. Good riddance, because the world doesn't need any more clowns. Yet in its heyday, few performances could top the trapeze mastery of the Flying Graysons. Well, until a mobster cut their cord on life short. Literally. <coughs> but they had a son, young yet just as talented as them. Orphaned and alone, all seemed hopeless for Dick Grayson. Until he scored the coolest foster dad in the freaking universe. The <laughs> goddamn <laughs> The Batman. goddamn And under the Cape Crusader, Dick wasn't just a son. He was a sidekick. A superhero. He was Robin. Until he was Bam! I remember when I watched this like yeah, I was like <laughs> You got <laughs> Robin spent many, many years kicking bad guys around the back alleys of Gotham City with his new dad. Twenty two we'll forget the time he crushed Blockbuster under a truck or when he whipped out that shark buckwheat pancakes and redheads. But then Batman suddenly realized, you know what? Bringing kids into battle is actually a bad idea. So he fired him, and then promptly forgot this little Yeah, that, I was like, that was... Only time to update the resume, Batman. Probably for the best, though. Bing, I mean, do, come on, do, do, the kid didn't do, do. even have a proper pair of pants. What's your problem, Bruce? Fuck Batman. Whoa, the mouth on this one. Actually, it was for the best, though not in the way Batman hoped. Inspired by a story of an ancient Kryptonian superhero, Dick took oh, to the streets yeah. by himself with a brand new uniform and a brand new name. From then on, he would be known as Nightwing. He just became even cooler. He's like a lot of characters, they become worse when they try to, you know, upgrade him and make him older. I still prefer Tim Drake over. He's like my favorite Robin. No doubt helped by his world-class acrobatic skills. He is one of only three people when he was Robin, when he became Red Robin, I was kind of like, mm. he's pretty much the same character, he just older. Like Nightwing felt different, like a like a and Red and Red Hood felt like a different transition. His mask features a holographic UI complete with it felt like the character developed as I mean he's rocking utility belts on his wrists and ankles full of lock picks smoke pellets and staples that are so strong they can support the weight of a yeah I remember but I was like what the fuck he also carries a rebreather grapple gun and wing dings that, that was uh under the red on it oh I'll figure out your secret one day wing dings no 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 more like the batarangs or thrown shurikens the standard wing dings are extremely sharp but he also carries dulled ultrasonic and explosive variants. But let's Ooh, get to the good stuff. So, she says ultrasonic sticks. Escrima sticks. That are great for beating the shit out of people. And they'll be that pretty might. shocked when they find out Nightwing has wired them with 50,000 volt tasers. Despite their falling out, Nightwing clearly remains inspired by the gadgets and skills of his batty mentor. And he's put them to good use. He's strong enough to punch people through solid walls and smash through a sheet of ice from underwater and hold back the 19,000 pounds per square inch bite force of an orca. And while breaking a car window, human. Sound impressive. They're, 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 they're normal humans. The car was underwater and therefore pressurized. To pull this off, he needed to impact the glass with over 24,000 pounds per square inch. That's easy, I can do that. I can just do this. enough to leap through the city while blindfolded and tough enough to survive falling off a building. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Uh, is guaranteed to break bone. And Nightwing dropped 140 feet onto his butt, and he was fine. And we've all fallen on our tailbone. That shit sucks. 
At one point, Nightwing spent 96 hours patrolling city streets looking for the criminal mastermind Two-Face, and an additional five or more hours collecting evidence. A 2010 study on sleep deprivation noted that 72 hours without sleep leads to a number of horrendous side yeah, effects. Yeah, I've done, I've gone that long without sleep. I just got very angry and was very quick tempered with people. You couldn't even tell Nightwing was in desperate need of a nap. And don't forget, he was trained by the number one detective in the world. He's good enough to solve a kidnapping with a single look at the scene of a crime. Even and sleep deprivation must have been fun training. Sky dive at 930 miles per hour, which took all of 15 minutes. That puts his starting position around 25 miles high and free falling faster than the speed of sound. For reference, real life Austrian athlete Felix Baumgartner performed a similar great leap from 24 miles up, hitting a maximum speed over 800 miles per oh, hour. Oh, yeah, to pull I this remember off, that. He needed a specialized suit to protect him from the extreme cold, unfiltered sunlight, and lack of oxygen. One mistaken movement could have put him into a rapid spin, rendering him unconscious and causing his blood to boil. And Nightwing just did it without any of that. Damn. He's certainly tough, but he's had his fair share of losses. His scarred body is proof. And eventually, him and Bats finally made up. He even took up the cowl himself when Batman was out for a while. Nightwing is one superhero who will always come out on top, along with his partners, Jim and Juan. No one. I mean, it's right here. In he will always come out on top. Is that a foreshadowing? Oh, that's uh, that's the names these ladies gave his butt cheeks. Oh, well. Guess you can't argue with the ass on that dick. Robin? I haven't used that name in a long time. They call me Nightwing. Before he became the man without fear, Matthew Murdoch was the son of a professional boxer named Battling Jack. Sounds like a badass, but Jack actually boxed because it was the only thing he was good at, and he needed money to get his kid through school so that little Matt would hey, have you a better life. Than stay out of Hell's Kitchen. Oh, what a good dad. He's punching oh, people for his like kids. His... I actually thought he was alright as Daredevil. Holding himself into a powerful fighter and an expert acrobat. This new athletic ability would come in handy when he witnessed a blind man walking right in front of a speeding truck. Feeling especially heroic that day, Matt dove in to push the guy to safety, but the truck crashed, sending some weird acid stuff flying all over Matt's face. From that day forward, Matt was permanently blind. I completely forget that he trained, he was training before he got injured. And founded a law firm with his friend but in, and everything else, else they always seem like he got him. injured he started training Except after he got his injured. dad was killed by a mobster for ruining a rigged boxing match because you can't be a superhero unless yeah, you've lost true. your parents Matt was distraught his true down around him and he couldn't even see it happen but he could hear it smell it feel it yeah, cause turns out that radioactive goop didn't just blind Matt, it gave him superpowers. So he dressed up like the devil himself and literally scared the mobster to death. And so, Daredevil was born. Many blind people, particularly those born with it, I like that they going back with the black suit in the show. Senses. Somewhat making up for their lack of I like the new suit. I, I, it grew on me. But like I don't like a black suit was better. His became so sensitive he can tell when a person is close to him simply from the disturbance in the air. His ears can pick up the faintest of sounds, from the slightest movement of an enemy to the rising heartbeat of someone who's lying. His taste can detect each separate ingredient in any recipe, including poisons, <laughs> and his nose can track you down like a bloodhound. Who needs eyes when you can sense everything around you to the smallest detail? But he couldn't use his blind powers as well as he does without the training under a super Stick. secret warrior named Stick. No relation. With Stick's help, Matt mastered several fighting styles, including ninjutsu, krav maga, and kung fu. And get this, Stick had basically the same blind powers as Daredevil. <laughs> Whoa. Silk shoes. Thanks to him, Matt learned how to hone his senses, 
to know and maneuver through his surroundings even better than those with working eyes. He also learned how to tap into something called an atom-induced radar sense. Like that thing that bats do when they bounce sound around to see in the dark or whatever? Sort of. That's sonar, or echolocation, and he can use it too. But thanks to his radioactive origins, Daredevil can actually emit electromagnetic energy waves from his body, which bounce off objects in his vicinity, painting a picture of his surroundings in his head. This means he doesn't even need sound to find and take down an opponent. So he's got a ton of ways to make up for his eye problem, but he's also got some awesome gear to help him take out the bad guys. Like his devil suit that's bulletproof, shockproof, flameproof, and a perfect backup plan whenever he forgets to prep for a Halloween party. I will say, I, I think Ben Affleck's suit looked better. A walking cane. By day, he's a Probably because it just looked more like the classic suit. The road, but by night, he whips out the horns and snaps I thought that part right there was fucking awesome when I was a kid. A cable, hidden blades, a recording device, and exploding pellets. It can even turn into a boomerang. Man, where do I get one of these? You don't have to be blind, right? No, but you shouldn't. You already destroy everything without a super club. Well, I'd need to practice to throw it as well as he does. You know how Captain America tosses his shield all over the place and it always seems to come back to him? Well, Daredevil does the exact yeah. same thing. And he can throw it hard enough to bust concrete. He's super strong. He can lift a 400-pound barbell and chuck it as casually as when I toss a beer away if it's time for a new one. He's quick enough to deflect bullets with his billy club. He's and normal human. And one back so it killed the man who fired it in the first place. Normal I human. wasn't expecting that. It looks Very like relatable. Glock, which has a muzzle speed of about 1,200 feet per second. At just 20 feet away, Daredevil had to react within 17 milliseconds to avoid getting hit. And while he couldn't survive a shot to the head, he's powered through a heck of a lot when compared to the average. He has a very he high pain through a show, that's for sure. His power can burn through metal. He's fallen multiple stories and walked away. Multiple powered through a napalm Held his own with Spider-Man, which is bullshit. Swung by the ox, who can tear through metal cages Bro, concrete, and more than 800 pounds. His keen control over his nervous system has also helped him resist tranquilizers and toxins, but his super senses are also his biggest weakness. They may give him way more field awareness than most anybody else, but if his opponent knows how his powers work, they can overload his senses with an extremely loud noise or a really bad smell. Like if he had a truckload of screaming skunks you could throw at him. That probably worked, right? But even with those weaknesses, Daredevil is a fearsome foe for anyone who would face him, even if he can't see them. He even managed to balance his life of law and the crime fighting, and became a huge success on his own. Papa Boxer would be proud. I'm gonna kill you! Take your shot. Right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, you need to treat your senses to Blue Apron. I kind of wish they was with a black suit, but you need to be distinct. They need to, you need to know immediately, I guess, who it is. So. Anyone who didn't watch the TV show be like, who the fuck is this? He wore that black outfit. I know you're there. You can leave now, or I can drag you out. It's your no, choice. You ain't dragging Nightwing out. Mm -hmm. It is him. He did. Uh, he played uh, Especially looking at the Prince of uh, Darkness. Quicksilver. Case over there is part of an investigation. But he, I think he also played Nightwing. Did they show it? Once. He played Nightwing and some, some else. Somebody else did. I'm curious to know who's playing Daredevil. I think he's a much, much better acrobat Nightwing. And Nightwing is like, I think he's one of the top three acrobats in the whole DC universe. Batman trained you better than that Nightwing. I know I said Daredevil gonna win, but I like Nightwing too. Oh. Oh, armbar. Oh no. 
The dude did that so easy. <laughs> like he just wakes up and does that to get out of bed. Well, I thought he broke his elbows and like, but I guess he dislocated his shoulder. Cause like he had a arm bar, so he <laughs> said better. Oh. I did say his suit is like, like electric, electricity resistant or whatever. Yeah, that's, I guess he don't know he blind, so he's like, he think he got the advantage. So you think darkness is your ally, but you really adopted the dark. The Sonic, yeah. He figured it out. She... Yeah, well, he is a detective. I mean, a detective trained by Batman. Oh no, Daredevil's about to lose. Uh... There's gonna be a lot of pissed off Marvel fanboys. Despite lacking a true superhuman physique, both Nightwing and Daredevil were extremely skilled and deadly fighters. When it came to overpowering each other, the Daredevil does have a lot of the weakness, like vulnerable weaknesses. Seemed a little stronger and more acrobatic, and Daredevil seemed a little quicker to react. But these differences were extremely minimal. It's actually feasible that these two could pull off almost all the exact same feats. Keyword being almost. Right. With such similar physical abilities, this really came down to their arsenal, Nightwing's gadgets, and Daredevil's superpowers. At first glance, these could simply counter each other, making this match completely even again. For example, both could take advantage of the dark with night vision or super senses, but only one set was perfectly suited to actively disrupt the other. Remember Nightwing's scanning mask? There's no way he couldn't notice those electro waves Daredevil's radar sense was sending everywhere. Even Mr. Magoo could have figured out something was weird here, let alone the guy trained by frickin' Batman. You know, the greatest <laughs> detective in the world. Through a little hand-to-hand -hand action, Nightwing was certainly clever enough to recognize Daredevil's reliance to sound over sight and had the perfect counterweapon. The ultrasonic wing. And he kind of gave it away sure when he said, if, if I, could, I wish I could see a face but right now. Times than not, Nightwing takes this thanks to his athletic skill, detective training, and high tech gadgets. All he had to do was dare to wing it. The winner is Nightwing. <laughs> Classic match. It better not be Goku and Superman. Oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. I was about to say, I do not want to see this shit. This thing came off the camera when I was setting it up. Are you telling me every single time you've set up the camera, you've never taken the cap off? It's a me, a Mario. Well, that was pretty cool. I, w I, I do think uh, Daredevil was a little, a little slim for my taste, but it was a cool fight. Great acrobatics and everything. And I was, I was gonna go with Nightwing, but I was like, I got by. I saw that they had the, like the, uh, he had the, uh, the Sonic like uh, 
machines, I mean, well, Sonic uh, device. But I was still was like, well, I'm gonna stick with my my original uh, pick and just stay with Daredevil. Because I figured, you know, he's popular right now. He's more popular now than, he, than he's ever been. So they, they're going to probably just have him let him win. But they had Nightwing win. And because of the, what I was thinking, that that weapon. Because Night, like, they can both pretty much do the same thing. It's just uh, Nightwing has, the Daredevil has actual weaknesses that Nightwing can exploit and that Nightwing doesn't have. So, good battle. Uh, I actually agree. I agree. I agree when I when I heard that when they they said that weapon he had uh, a sound weapon, and I just like I said I'm just stubborn and I, I picked something and I said I'm gonna stick with it because I had a feeling that if I switch because they pointed that out early in it in the in the um, they were describing them and breaking them down detailing them and I was like. They, they, they're saying that I feel that they're throwing that out for people to take the bay and they're going to still have Daredevil win but I was wrong <laughs> and they actually had Nightwing win but I liked it good battle nice live action for the, especially for their first one and uh, I think I still prefer the animated ones though I mean live action is cool but what I've seen them do with the animated what it did, you know, the 3D ones or the 2D ones or whatever, pixelated ones, or whatever. I, I like the, I prefer that over these. You know, Bad in the Sun had gotten it down. They had been doing it a lot longer, so they had it down, so it looked sharper. To me, and for, for the first one, like I said, that was good. But I prefer the animated ones. But if they want to keep doing it, I'm sure. Like I said, Bad in the Sun started, they were kind of rough. They got better and better and better with it as the time went on. So um, they keep doing this, I'm sure they'll be fine. But I'm, I'm pretty sure Mario vs. Sonic is not going to be a live, live action one. So. Anywho, thanks for watching everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed my reaction. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, putting out some more gameplay as I need to play Tomb Raider. I think I'm going to play that next. Not Shadow Tomb Raider because I'm going to start with Tomb Raider and then Rise of Tomb Raider. Then I'll get Shadow Tomb Raider. Plus, I don't like getting games when they first come out. That's just me. I don't like I don't know. I know I'm going to I got God of War, but I normally don't do that. Like, I, like, I like for people to play them, complain about the bugs, and then complain to whoever the developer is, which... Uh, I don't know if you got who the fuck I'm doing. Anyway, complain to the developer, fix the bugs. That way, when I play it, I get a better game and I ain't got to worry about any bugs. But thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, and subscribe, like I said. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.